Hey, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and today I'm going to try to break down everything that I know about Trick Room and Pokemon Mo. I mostly play Enu, so I will be mostly specifically sticking to that tier, but at the same time, I will try to touch on my light understanding of other tiers and try to exemplify great Trick Room users in UU and OU and great Trick Room Pokemon that can be abused and used within that setting. Okay, first things first, what is Trick Room? Trick Room is a move that basically reverses the turn order. It reads specifically as the user creates a bizarre area in which slower Pokemon get to move first for five turns. So it lasts five turns, that's very important. And the wording is very important. The fact that it says slower Pokemon get to move first instead of like increasing the speed of slower Pokemon or saying that slower Pokemon are now fast, the wording is very important and it makes certain moves impact the game in a way they wouldn't normally. Trick Room also has negative 7 priority, making it literally the slowest move in the game. It will always move last, no matter the speed of your Pokemon. That means that Trick Room users should always be bulky. You don't want to put Trick Room on a Pokemon like Gengar that's fast just to try to get it off first and be safe. It's better to put it on a bulky Pokemon like Claydol or Bronzong and be able to get it up, set up other things on the side like screens, on top of having utility, like being able to learn a move like Teleport to be able to safely switch into other Pokemon, or representing damage of their own. It's crucial that your Trick Room users are bulky, so they can be brought in throughout the game multiple times to set up Trick Room many, many times, and not be whittled down or one-shot like a Dendar. You want things like Playdoll, you want things like Bronzarn that are bulky Trick Room setters, to be able to safely execute your Trick Room across a longer game. Playing a Trick Room team is kind of its own style of Pokemon PvP altogether. You're playing an entirely different game. You have to adjust to that, and you have the advantage of building your team around that, whereas your opponent doesn't. They have to stick with their, you know, fast Pokemon. They have to adjust while in the game. While Trick Room is up, most Speed EVs and Speed IVs become useless in the game. So if the, if the opponent is running a bunch of fast Pokemon, and you bring in Trick Room, and just have a bunch of very slow, bulky, strong attacking Pokemon, you're going to be at such an advantage. Trick Room is all about adjusting on the fly, having tons of in-game knowledge, and being able to outsmart, outplay, and just be better than your opponent. Trick Room is a very complicated strategy, so there are a ton of mistakes to be made, so it's important to practice a ton. You cannot stack Trick Room. So while Trick Room is active, if you were to click Trick Room again and use it again, it will actually revert the rules of speed back to normal. Trick Room only lasts for 5 turns, and then usually you have to use one of those turns to set it up, or switch, or teleport, etc. So it's important to use those as best as you possibly can and plan a ton ahead. Trick Room is, always, is all about planning into the future, and executing properly, and adjusting on the fly as needed. On average, you'll probably need to put up around 2-4 to four Trick Rooms per game. Most, if not all, Pokemon that can use Trick Room are Psychic type, meaning you're going to have a huge weakness to Dark or Ghost type moves, so it's very, very important to have res a res at least one nice wall resistant to these attacks on your team. A huge mistake that a lot of Trick Room players do is make a very flimsy but very very strong competitive pokemon to use within trick room however i do use this rampardos and it's tons of fun i recommend you know doing it if you want to have fun but it is important to remember that there are better trick room users in this rampardos it's important to use slow strong bulky pokemon as opposed to just strong flimsy pokemon However, I do want to make it clear, please use whatever you would like. I personally love using this Rampardos. It's tons of fun. I do recommend it at least once. But if you're trying to be the best of the best, it is better to go with an alternative like Machamp. Machamp is a very similar Pokemon to Rampardos. Here's its stats and base stats. But it's just bulkier. It has 90 HP, 130 attack, 80 defense, 85 special defense, while boasting a little slightly slower speed. It has a little less oomph in terms of strength, but the bulk more than makes up for it, and it'll survive many hits as opposed to Rampardos, maybe surviving just one. Just like any tier and in any meta right now, entry hazards are crucial, and things like Stealth Rocks are super important in Trick Room, specifically because in Trick Room, you're on a timer. You're on a five-turn timer to do as much damage and impact your enemy's team as much as possible. 
So putting up Stealth Rocks to help knock your opponent's HP down into those one-hit KO ranges can be so crucial in saving HP on your own Pokemon and saving time on your Trick Room turns. It's very important to have Trick Room Pokemon on your team that can be useful inside and outside of Trick Room. I would point to this Ursaring as a perfect example. Where it's adamant nature, it's going to do a ton of damage. Let's look at Ursaring's base stats. Ursaring's base stats are pretty bulky, 130 attack, 90 HP, 75 defenses, but very slow at a 55 speed. Perfect for a Trick Room Pokemon with tons of bulk, tons of strength, but lacking in the speed department to be able to hit Pokemon. So you're going to want Adamant to add more strength to that, because why not? You're going to be faster no matter what. But you're actually going to speed EV 252 to outspeed certain Pokemon outside of Trick Room. There are certain Trick Room Pokemon that you're going to want to speed EV train, even on a Trick Room team. Although there are others that are all, kind of all or nothing, like this Rampardos, where you're going to want to HP train to add that extra bulk. And then sometimes it's nice to have multiples of, of certain competitive Pokemon. So for example, having an Earth Ring with 252 speed and then also having an Earth Ring that's EV trained in 252 HP is really useful. And you can switch them in and out depending on what's needed for the meta and what's going on with the speed tiers. A general rule of thumb that I use to judge whether a Pokemon is Trick Room team worthy or not is their base speed stat. So if a Pokemon is base 80 speed or less, in my opinion, that's usable in Trick Room on a Trick Room team. Of, although that judgment or measurement definitely depends on what tier you're playing and what is currently meta and what kind of speed tiers you need to be looking out for. So make sure you make some adjustments to it, but 80 is a decent like middle line. Okay, now I'm going to talk more about general team building within a Trick Room team and how I personally go about putting together my team. So personally, I go ahead and start off every Trick Room team with two Trick Room setters. I talk about this in so many videos and so many PvP videos. I really like having a bulky supporting wall type Trick Room setter alongside a damage dealing Trick Room abuser and sweeper of its own right. So my personal two go-tos in the NU tier are Claydol and Behem. Now starting from this core, you can pretty much go in any direction that you want, and then it's more about filling out the holes as you see fit. So one of my personal favorite two-man team combos is Quagsire and Buffalant. The reason why Quagsire and Buffalant combo so well, especially within the NU tier right now, is kind of how they switch in and out and interact with each other. So Venusaur is currently the most used Pokemon within the NU tier, sitting at around a 30% usage rate. So that means one out of every three games you're going to encounter a Venusaur. So it's important to think about that and think about how to counter it. And the reason we do that is the good old bait and switch. So we have our Quagsire, who is water ground, who can be switched in in any sort of advantage point that it can be brought in at. And 99% of the time, if you bring in Quagsire and the opponent has a Venusaur, they're going to instantly switch in to that Venusaur. And thus begins the game of prediction and head games and preparing ahead of time. So what people don't know is that an EQ, at least from my personal Quagsire, actually does around 50% damage to a Venusaur, which is pretty insane. Because Venusaur is poison and grass type, so EQ actually ends up being neutral damage to it. So I bring in Quag at an advantage, they swap in Venusaur, I predict it, I throw up the EQ, and then they're going to throw up a Giga Drain to try to one-shot my Quagsire, and I'm going to swap to my Buffalant in prediction. And my Buffalant has Sap Sipper, which is the most crucial part of this whole interaction, the most crucial part of this whole duo bait and switch. So Sap Sipper is an ability that boosts the attack type, or boosts his attack power when hit by a grass move. And it also absorbs it, and you take no damage. So he's going to Giga Drain my Quagsire, I'm going to swap to Buffalant, I'm going to take no damage on Buffalant, just absorb it, get an attack boost, and then be put at such an advantage state to be able to take over that game, and kind of, I can either Mega Horn him and do a ton of damage, or I can start setting up with Swords Dance and Cotton Guard. This Buffalant is an extremely niche, extremely specific Buffalant in its own right. I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but I don't want to get too deep into it. Its job is to turbo turbo set up with two Swords Dance and two Cotton Guard and pretty much win the game from there. It's pretty hard to stop this thing once it's fully set up. Okay, so now we have a four man Pokemon team and kind of filling out the last two slots is where it gets really difficult and really specific and you'll probably change these a ton. 
Okay, both of the Pokemon that I just added to my team are slow, faulty setup Pokemon. So it's important to now counteract that by adding a very fast Pokemon that can cover a type coverage that I don't already cover, while also operating outside of Trick Room and being your fast sweeper. Every Trick Room team, in my opinion, needs at least one super fast threat that operates extremely speedily outside of Trick Room. And my personal favorite go-to option for this has been this Superior. Most people don't use Superior as a special attacker like I do. Most people use it as kind of a bulky utility Swiss knife Pokemon that can set up screens and support your team. But I've personally fallen in love with this Superior and it fits a great spot on my team as a special attacking absolute speed demon that has ice and Giga Drain coverage, while also having Substitute to kind of scout for things and also set up a little bit on its own with Substitute and Calm Mind. With something like this, with this kind of Speed Demon Sweeper, you want to wait until late game when either both of your Trick Rumors are, are dead, or you're just prevent, presented a super good opportunity to bring it in and really sweep the rest of his team. You want to bring it in when you've dealt with every threat that's faster than it, sitting at around a 113 base stat speed, but you can really use any fast special attacking Pokemon in this slot. Okay, this last slot is a much harder slot to fill as no Pokemon team is going to be perfect, but you're basically going to use it to have a stable attacker that covers some of the typings you're missing, while hopefully also being an immediate impact to the game. So right now, all of the Pokemon, or most of the Pokemon that I kind of have are all like setup-y and very slow. I need something fast and impactful that can get into the game and mess it up immediately. Superior can kind of do that with its speed and Giga Drain, but I want something bulkier and more reliable, especially something that can impact the game reliably within Trick Room. And we have a ton of options for this, as you can see with all of these Pokemon that I've laid out. There are some memeier options, like this Shuckle, this Power Trick Shuckle that I love to run. It's very, very fun. It's very meme -y. It's not a serious set. I would never run this at a tournament, unless I was trying to be crazy and fun. But, you know, having that Stone Edge EQ to fill this team slot is literally, honestly, perfect coverage, even though it's a bit of a meme pick. But I don't want to talk about too much about Power Trick Shuckle, because that could be a video of its own. It's such a complicated Pokemon, such a complicated pick. I'm going to go ahead and off the bat and say the most common Pokemon that I put in this pick and I put in this slot is actually Rampardos because it does exactly what I need it to in this slot. It comes in inside of Trick Room hopefully uh, and set up and it just impacts the game in such a major manner. This thing will always one shot at least one Pokemon if it comes in within Trick Room. This thing is going to come in and just burst through doors, burst through walls, burst through any Pokemon it needs to and that's what I need in this slot. I need a scary insane damage dealer that can break things down while also covering coverage types and coverage moves that I don't already have in the team so having an EQ rock slider or EQ head smash or EQ stone edge user in this slot is extremely good for my team as you can see the typings but as I said before really any of these Pokemon would be a decent spot in this in this in this slot um, one of the worst slots definitely being this mill tank as it kind of it doesn't add enough coverage it's another, it's another normal type attacker, another normal type Pokemon like Bufalon. It would really make me weak to fighting type and not add enough coverage and make me weaker to other Pokemon types as well. Some of my favorite picks for this slot are definitely going to be any of these six. Bear Tick or Ursaring for that fast, uh, reliable attacker within Trick Room. Golurk and Rampardos being a little less reliable, but having a lot more damage behind them. And then Flareon adding insane coverage in insane ways, having a really crazy move pull, also having access to quick attack priority, Shadow Ball, which is will take people off guard. Flareon is also a good mixed attacker, so if you really need a mixed Pokemon for this slot, you could also definitely go that, but I think it's better to just go something more reliable in this slot so that can like immediately impact directly. Now Sudowoodo is a bit of a meme pick here, but honestly it fits the role decently well, being a great Trick Room user, a bit balty, although a bit meme -y, but it does fit the coverage that I need. I really want a rock and ground user here, so for those who don't know, EQ Slide, and what otherwise known as Earthquake Rock Slide, or Earthquake Stone Edge, has been a combination of moves used throughout all of Pokemon's competitive history. It's one of the best two moves to cover the most amount of Pokemon types within the game. It's absolutely incredible. It's very important, very important piece of knowledge to know as a Pokemon PvP player. 
Okay, but after a lot of rambling, let's go ahead and cover basically what you want in a, in a Trick Room team. You want one Balti Trick Room Setter, you want one Damage Dealing Trick Room Setter, you want some sort of duo or combination pair that can interact with each other well, or just two nice bulky Pokemon that can, that can do well in Trick Room and maybe set up. You want one Speed Demon to be able to operate outside of Trick Room and finish up games out, after your Trick Roomers have died. And then you want one old, reliable, huge, bulky, insane threat that most of the time you're going to want to swap to this Pokemon if possible after you set up. So most games will start with play all lead into light screen, reflect start, into then using trick room, into then using teleport or just dying. If it dies, that's totally okay. And then bringing in Rampardos as fast as possible with both screens up and trick room up. To be able to wreck havoc and absolutely destroy as many of your opponent's Pokemon as possible. Okay, now I'm going to go through each tier and kind of highlight my personal favorite Trick Room users and Pokemon that can be abused inside of Trick Room. I don't play OU personally, but OU actually has some incredible Trick Room users nicely in this three line here with Cofferigus, Greenicles, and then Jellison. These are all incredible Trick Room users with incredible typings and incredible bolt. I'm not going to run through every one of them in great detail, but I will cover them briefly. And your reasons for using them and why you might want to choose that Trick Room Setter over another. So Cofagrigus is going to be kind of your overall turbo, balty, and annoying Pokemon to use Trick Room with, as it has Mummy, which can cancel other Pokemon's abilities, and then it boasts insane bulk stats, although the HP is a little low. Sitting with a nice 30 speed, perfect, nice and slow Trick Room Pokemon, even with a 95 special attack base stat, doing some decent damage, but that's, you know, that's what OU is all about. It's kind of got everything going on for it. You would use Cofagurgus if you're having issues with things like Cobbledur or physical attackers. All right, Reuniclus is more of a damage dealer as well as having some bulk and being a great Trick Room user. So Reuniclus has a nice 110 base stat HP, 75 base stat defense, a little low, but still nice, decent average. 85 special defense, decent average, but then a nice, insane 125 special attack based out, which is extremely strong for a Pokemon of this bulk that can also learn Trick Room. Not to mention the perfect 30 slow snail speed. You would go Reuniclus if you need some more oomph and damage on your team, especially in the special attack stat category. Jellicent is a very interesting Pokemon, has a very nice and unique typing with Water Ghost, also boasting two insane abilities in Water Absorb and Cursed Body, either being disruptive or being healthy and bulky. Jellicent has less stats than the other two Trick Room setters, boasting a 100 HP, 70 defense, measly 85 special attack, and then 105 special defense, also being a bit faster than the other two at 60 speed, making it a more unique, intricate Trick Room user. But what it makes up for is its move pool and its typing. Its typing is super unique, and its move pool is super vast. Being able to use Grass, Water, Ice, Psychic, Dark, Electric, Fire. Ton there's tons of move pool synergy here and flexibility, which others kind of lack. At least in terms of damage and in terms of move typing. I would use Jellicent over the other Pokemon if you're looking for more of a coverage Pokemon with some also solid recovery and bulk with Recover. Moving on to UU, I do want to make a quick reminder that I do have limited knowledge of these two tiers as I mostly play NU personally. So I appreciate any patience or leaving any corrections in the comments and I'll be happy to exemplify them and make them known and try to spread information as accurately and as best as possible. So the two Trick Roomers that I'm going to be talking about in UU are Bronzong, my personal favorite, and then Dustlops. Honestly, both are incredible, and I love them both. Dustlops might honestly be one of the most unique Pokemon in the game, because it's one of the only Pokemon where its pre-evolution is generally stronger than its final evolution. Slapping an Eviolite on Dustlops usually makes him better and stronger and more powerful and more used than Dustnor in any tier. Dustlops in Pokemon mode can only learn the ability Pressure, which honestly could be much more useful than you realize, and I've definitely lost games personally due to Pressure. Dustlops' base stats are so interesting and so unique, boasting a very, very weak 40 HP stat, but very extremely solid strong 130 defense, 
130 special defense, and then a beautiful 25 speed for Trick Room, which is a perfect speed tier to underspeed other slow speed threats, maybe like Slowbro or Gigalith. It also having 70 base attack and 60 base special attack can be important, as you can just do some decent base damage sometimes. Dustlobs has a super interesting diverse move pool that will kind of disable your opponent in many ways. So a super common thing on Dustlobs is Will-O-Wisp, giving it an ability to really disrupt physical attackers on your enemy's team. Dustlobs truly just is the iconic disruptor of annoying your opponent. With things like Memento, Haze, Trick, Trick Room of course, and then Pain Split for some decent recovery and disrupting your opponent even more while even recovering, it is just such a pain to play against Dustlops and can be feel so powerful and feel so insane to use on your side of the field. You would use Dustlops over Bronze on if you're looking for more of a disruptor, and you would use Bronze on if you're looking for more of a support role, as Bronze on can set up things like screens. Let's go ahead and get into Bronze on now. So Bronze on plays more of a supporting role than a disrupting role, having boasting the abilities Levitate, and heat proof, which are honestly really, really both useful for its bulk, allowing it to dodge either one of its weaknesses, either a weakness to EQ or just flamethrower. Bronze on also has some incredibly unique stats. As you can see, none of his stats end in zero. Like most Pokemon would just have like 70 HP or 90 attack, but all of his stats end in these weird, obscure, specific numbers. Bronze aren't coming in with 67 base HP, 89 base attack, which is surprising, and 116 base defenses, which is super solid, really making up for the 67 base HP. 79 base special attack, which can be super useful, making him mixed if you need some sort of attacking, but usually, in my personal opinion, I like just going full support on Bronze on and not maybe giving him one attack move at the most. I think he's better played as a bulky Pokemon in a full tank. 33 speed is interesting. 33 speed is actually maybe one of the most troublesome things for Bronzon, as it's obviously still extremely slow, but a ton of Pokemon boast 30 speed, and they will outspeed him within Trick Room. But that's honestly fine, because usually your Trick Room setters don't really need to outspeed things in Trick Room. It's more so your Pokemon abusers and Pokemon that abuse Trick Room that need to outspeed those other Pokemon. That's what really matters, because usually you'll just be switching this Pokemon out, or teleporting out, just using it to set up, and then getting out with them immediately. So, this, it's less relevant, but still important to understand and know. So, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys my personal Bronzong set and its moveset, although Bronzong can have so many things. It can set up Rain Dance, it can set up Sunny Day, it can set up Trick Room, it can block and be really annoying and prevent Pokemon from escaping, it can have Hypnosis, it can have Imprison to Disrupt, there are so many things, Gyro Ball, which is a great Steel Stab type move for it, especially being so slow, and that's one of the best interactions with Trick Room, is that with Gyro Ball, you're going to move first with Gyro Ball, even though it's meant to be used on super slow Pokemon, now it's going to become a slow, fast, hard-hitting move. It's going to become, it's going to overcome that weakness that it's supposed to have. Bronzong is also a great Trick Roomer for doubles, which I'm not going to talk about much at all in this video, if at all, but I'm actually making him for my current doubles team right now. I know nothing about doubles, but I'm hoping to learn with a Trick Room team. It having access to Ally Switch being a very important part of that doubles meta. Bronzong's offensive move pool is honestly really surprising to me. Getting things like Shadow Ball, things like Rock Slide, things like Psychic, things like Gyro Ball, things like Grass Knot, things like Explosion, Earthquake, Charge Beam and Calm Mind to set up. There are some really interesting typing, th crazy things you can do with Bronzong, and I think it's very unique. Bronzong also has access to Stealth Rocks, which is super, super huge. Okay, I'm gonna stop gushing over Bronzong too much. I think Bronzong is, you would choose it over Dustlops if you need more coverage. It actually has more coverage than Dustlops, even though Dustlops' coverage is decent. Bronzong has way more, which is crazy. It's also more of a supporting type as opposed to disruptive, where Dustlops you would go things like Will-O-Wisp, Thunder Wave, etc, etc, try to annoy your opponent, where Bronzong you're kind of focused on your own team, you're going to set up screens, you're going to set up Trick Room, and you're going to do a little bit of damage on your own. Whew, okay, let's go ahead and move on to NU Trick Room Setters.
Okay, so my two personal favorite Trick Room Setters in NU actually won't be in this list because they're actually in untiered, but they're in my party right now as you can see, and as you may have seen them in many, many PvP videos that I do, Mahium and Claydol. So Claydol is great for a lot of reasons. It's much more of a supporting Trick Roomer, and it's kind of my main Trick Roomer that I use. Most Trick Room teams, you're going to want to have at least two Trick Roomers, and I'll kind of go into more details on that later, but you're going to want one main faulty defensive Trick Roomer, and then one that can kind of carry its own weight and do some damage. So let's stick to Claydol first things first. My Claydol boost boasts a special defense nature, and then defense EVs, trying to make it as overall as bulky as possible, also with HP of the EVs, of course. The only stats that matter on this Claydol are 31 HP, the 26 defense, and the 31 special defense. This Claydol has no attacking moves, it is fully for supporting and setting up trick room for my team. The 15 speed kind of matters, I actually wish it was 0, but honestly it being at 15 is pretty decent because then... I can use it to outspeed certain things inside Trick Room and certain things outside of Trick Room. Claydol has a surprising 75 base stat speed, allowing it to outspeed certain things out of Trick Room that you'd be shocked by. My Claydol boasts double screens with the light play to help it make those screens longer and more effective. Screens have become an overwhelmingly part, huge part of the meta recently in like most tiers of Pokemon Mo. They're kind of annoying, they kind of slow games down, but at the same time, they allow for insane things to happen that shouldn't normally happen, so I think they're kind of fun overall, as long as you aren't using them for nefarious purposes. And then outside of screens, the two rooms my Claydol has are Trick Room and Teleport. I love this moveset. I wouldn't change a single thing about it. Teleport has been absolutely incredible. So Teleport has negative 6 priority, and it will go mostly last before any other move, obviously besides Trick Room having negative 7 priority, but... Being able to tank a hit on this Claydol and then safely switch to another Pokemon on my team to bring it in safely so huge with Trick Room because a lot of the times you're going to be switching to Pokemon that are kind of vulnerable. You don't want to, you know, you want to make them as safe as possible and leave your Trick Room users and Trick Room abusers as much room as possible to impact and damage your opponent's team. You basically just want to keep your Trick Room abusers as healthy as possible and Teleport helps enable that. Claydol's ability is actually very important. A lot of times I can switch in against an EQ prediction and just allow it to, you know, get in, take no damage, and then be able to set up again. That's a huge part of Claydol's strengths, is being able to switch in on Earthquakes and get up that free Trick Room. And being it, allowing it even more stability and even more bulk than a normal bulky Trick Room users. Moving on to Claydol's base stats has 60 HP, which is a little low, but is definitely made up for it in its nice defenses. These base stats are very, very solid for NU, like absolutely incredible, uh, with a decent move pool to boot. The 70 base attack, 70 base special attack can be super useful. If you want to use Claydol as a secondary trick roomer, or maybe a main trick roomer, but only having one of the screens, that can be super useful. Let's say that most of your Trick Room users have decent special defense base stat already. You can go ahead and use Claydol just to set up one screen, just to set up Reflect, and then have something like Ice Beam on it to annihilate other threats. Okay, moving on to Behem, which is my favorite secondary Trick Room user in Pokemon Mo in NU, and it has incredible damage potential. I love this thing. I was... When I made this thing, I had very low expectation, and I was so, so, so pleasantly surprised, and it's now, like, probably my favorite Trick Roomer over Claydol overall, maybe my second favorite, I don't know. It's up there, incredible Pokemon, underrated. But let's go ahead and talk about its stats, what it's good at, why it's good, and what it does. My Behem is Mild, which is slightly suboptimal. I wish it was something like Quiet. Quiet would actually be incredible and matter a lot, honestly, with a lot of speed tiers, as Behem has... 40 base stat speed, which is quite slow, but it can be outsped by things like Slowbro a lot of the time, which can be unfortunate for it. But having this plus special attack nature has been absolutely incredible, and I wouldn't change it for the world. So, Behem being a Tricker Mon allows me to train it in HP and special attack, giving it that bonus bulk that it really shouldn't be able to have. Okay, the Behem moveset this Behem moveset is something that I have absolutely fallen in love with, and it's so tight, I wouldn't change a thing about it. Psyshock 
has been absolutely incredible over Psychic. So for those who don't know, Psyshock is basically Psychic, but it actually damages the opponent's physical defense instead of special defense. So it kind of gives people, it kind of messes people up and takes them off guard. So if they, they'll bring in like a very specially defensive wall to kind of counter or deal with my Behem, I'll go ahead and use Psyshock or just something like Clefable and just absolutely obliterate it or just hit power fighting against Clefable. But Psyshock can be an absolute game changer. It's been incredible for me and I would take it every time over Psychic. You're only trading 10 base power for Psyshock over Psychic. Psychic does have a 90 base power, but wow, the, the effect of Psyshock and the surprise value is incredible. And then Hidden Power Fighting as the other damaging move has given me the perfect coverage that annihilates, honestly, a ton of the enemy meta. Clefable is one of the most played Pokemon and one of my most hated in the tier. So being able to bring this thing in, set up against it with Trick Room and Nasty Plot, since it's such a tank, it can't really do anything against it. It's it's perfect. Behem is the perfect Pokemon to abuse Clefable as setup fodder, bring it in, Trick Room, Nasty Plot once or twice depending on how fast they switch out and then go to town and this thing has won me so many games on its own. Very, very strong. Love the moveset. Very tight. Okay, some other things you could do with Behem is make it even more bulky and maybe keep Nasty Plot but don't train it in special attack and don't go Life Orb. You could go something bulkier, maybe go Leftovers on it and then train it defensively and special defensively and just let it get strong with Nasty Plot over time. I might even try that set. That sounds incredible because it has Recover and Calm Mind. So these are two other incredible setup moves. Recovering, Recover being alongside Nasty Plot, Calm Mind obviously replacing Nasty Plot, really allowing this thing to be a slower, uh, stronger one-man army. I think this set really allows it to be an immediate impact and a very, very scary threat very fast but can be stopped a bit easier. Calm Mind and Recover might make it more unstoppable, but a little slower and harder to set up. If you would like, and also depending on the meta, you could replace Hidden Power Fighting with things like Charge Beam, things like Energy Ball, all incredible moves, Flash Cannon if you really need. I definitely would not change Psy Shock, at least go Psychic over it. You want to have at least that one stab move. Okay, and into Behem's base stats. 75 HP, 75 defense, 95 special defense. These are the things that matter. It's physical attack, doesn't matter at all. 40 base stat speed, pretty insane. The most insane thing about Behem, 125 special attack base stat in NU is insane. That is like top of the tier level, like highest special attack base stat within the tier. It is That is top, 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 top tier special attack damage within the NU tier. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cover one more Trick Room Setter within the NU tier, one that I don't personally use, but I might be picking up soon within Bronzor, which is obviously Bronzon's little brother, which we covered in the UU tier. Bronzor is an interesting Pokemon, honestly kind of an annoying Pokemon in my opinion. I really don't like playing against it, I don't think I'd like playing with it, but at this point I might want to try it, I'm not quite sure. Boasting the same abilities, incredible abilities, as its brother Bronzon. Bronzor is good for a lot of the same reasons that Bronzong is good, is that it has incredible abilities, giving it more bulk than it should. You get to go Eviolite on this thing because it's a pre-evolution. It has very, very mediocre base stats in terms of anything, but it's honestly, with its typing and with its abilities, it really does work in NU, and it just has enough bulk to really make it work. Also, having 23 base stat speed is pretty important. That'll outspeed in Trick Room, outslow, whatever you want to say most Pokemon within NU, besides certain niche things like Shuffle. Since Bronzor has such weak attack and special attack stats, it's definitely going to be mostly just a support Pokemon. It's going to have things like Reflect, it's going to have things like Light Screen, it's going to have your Trick Room, and you can put one other move on it, maybe Stealth Rock or Toxic or whatever you want to fill that last room with, that last move with. That move is probably pretty... Flexible. You could also go Ancient Power if you're really trying to like maybe stick it in and have it sweep in some silly way. It's very, very optional, very flexible. But the the three moves that aren't as flexible being Trick Room, Reflect, Light Screen. Bronzor is definitely just an annoying Trick Room wall. It's very good, but very annoying. You would go it if you just want straight up defensiveness, straight up bulk, straight up little smiley dude staring at you. Whew, okay, are you guys ready to go back through the tiers, starting from OU and now cover Trick Room Abusers? I sure am. 
Okay, I'm not going to cover them too much, but some of the best Trick Room abusers in OU are things like Conkledurt. Conkledurt is already a super, super strong Pokemon in, in OU, and it can just do well outside of OU because it has Mock Punch, Mock Punch being a priority fighting move. With Stab, obviously, on Conkledurt, Conkledurt is going to do insane damage no matter what with the insane 140 attack stat and some really solid bulk with 105 HP, 95 defense. Although a below average special defense is 65. It having Mock Punch really makes up for that. So you can use it outside of Trick Room and have Mock Punch. You can use it inside of Trick Room and just absolutely go ape shit with things like Stone Edge or anything else. Literally any other move on this Pokemon outside of or inside of Trick Room is just gonna do insane damage. From Stone Edge to Poison Jab if you want, to Brick Break, to Rock Slide, to anything. This thing is Ice Punch is another great alternative. That's probably one of the better options in OU especially. I don't know the tier super well, but I would assume Ice Punch is great with things like Dragonite and Flying and Dragons flying around. Another fantastic Trick Room user in OU is Tyranitar, who is the absolute iconic classic of OU strength and Pokemon strength, having some of the best base stats in the entire game, and it being a real... Tyranitar being known for being a real Swiss army knife type of Pokemon, being able to do whatever you want. It can set up stealth rocks, it can be somewhat specially attacking with 95 base attack special attack. That's the craziest part. You can put like flamethrower on this thing, put surf on this thing. So crazy. Or you can just throw the normal crunch, stone edge, rock slide, EQ, etc, etc. There's just so many things you can do with Tyranitar. You can make it bulky, make it a wall, make it purely a sandstorm setter. Also, this brings into play weather involving Trick Room, and Trick Room plus weather can be some insane things. It'd be some really, really complicated strategies and insane team building. I usually hate Tyranitar, but inside Trick Room, honestly, I love Tyranitar because he really shines, and he really just becomes this beautiful tool that you can do anything with. And usually Tyranitar's downfall is its speed, and it can get messed up by things like Complitor's Mach Punch, which we just covered. But in Trick Room, it can really overcome its weaknesses and become a beautiful monster. If you're a fan of Tyranitar, I highly, highly recommend trying Tyranitar in Trick Room at least once. Try to build a team around it. Maybe, you know, be cheap with it. Buy some cheap mons. Just build one and try it. I really, really recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Very complex. You're going to make a lot of mistakes and probably lose a lot of games while you're learning. But it can be a beautiful, fun masterpiece that which you orchestrate together. It's really incredible. Now, Scizor is another great Trick Room user, but we're not going to talk too much about Scizor because I hate this Pokemon. It's probably my most hated Pokemon in Pokemon Competitive, and it's one of the main reasons why I don't play Overused. So Scizor has a super annoying type at Bug and Steel, making it really only weak to fire for the most part. It has an insane move pool, allowing it to be a setup Pokemon with agility or sword stance. Also, having insane priority stab moves within Bullet Punch. He also gets the ability Technician, which increases the power of his Bullet Punch, which is a stab priority move. So having Technician, Stab, Priority, Bullet Punch really makes this Pokemon insane. And it was already, it would honestly be insane without it, but it really sends it over the edge. But moving on to Scizor's base stats, boasting an insane 130 base attack on an already incredibly bulky Pokemon, 80 special defense, 100 defense, 70 HP, the main thing making it good in Trick Room, 65 speed is a pretty important speed stat, and can make it set up within Trick Room a lot more reliably than outside of Trick Room. Usually if you're setting up Scizor outside of Trick Room, your opponent's going to bring in a fire type and flamethrower and just one-shot it. But within Trick Room, you're going to be able to be faster than most fire types that they're going to switch in to mess it up with. Okay, that's enough of OU on to UU Trick Room Abusers. Okay, first things first, one of my favorite Trick Room Abusers in UU is Ozamaril. I used this thing extensively while, while it was in NU for the short amount of time it was because it is so, so strong. The reason why Ozmaril is so good is because it has an ability called Huge Power, which very few Pokemon have, which simply doubles the Pokemon's attack. Absolutely insane. Probably the best ability in the entire game. The other two things that make Ozmaril insane are Aqua Jet and Belly Drum as a combination. Having those both together on the same Pokemon is crazy. So Aqua Jet is a 40 base power, 
priority water type move, so it has stab on Osborne, which is very important. And then Belly Drum is a move that many of you might know, but some of you might not. It halves you, the user's HP to boost its attack stat to full, meaning that one Belly Drum use is equal to three Swords Dances, giving this thing an extremely deadly combination of being able to come in, Belly Drum up to plus six attack, and then Aqua Jet everything to death. Uh, but also, in Trick Room, for things that it can't one-shot with Aqua Jet, being able to just use normal moves like Waterfall, which is a nice base stab water move, or things like Super Power could be incredible, things like Hyper Voice to get past Substitutes if that's an issue in the meta. It being in Trick Room really lets it pop off, simply. But let's go ahead and look at Ozumarill's base stats. It has very low attack stat, as you can see, at 50, but... Huge power in Belly Drum more than make up for that, making it an extreme attacking force, which will always run on it. So 100 HP base stat, 80 defense base stat, 80 special defense base stat, making this Pokemon surprisingly naturally bulky. Th that's a huge part of it is it looks like it's not that strong of an attacker, but it's one of the strongest attackers in the game while also being decently naturally bulky, while also having that beautiful 50 speed stat for Trick Room, which sometimes... I kind of wish it was 30, I actually wish it, wish it was slower, but it's also nice to be able to train Trick Ozumarill in multiple ways. So Ozumarill is one of those Pokemon that I was talking about earlier that can be trained either 252 HP and 252 attack, or 252 speed and 252 attack. I personally opt for speed, making it usable outside of Trick Room after those Trick Room turns wear, up, wear out after setting up your Ozumarill. Whew, okay, that's enough about Osmoril. Let's move on to our next UU Trick Room abuser being Gigalith. I love Gigalith. I was actually making a Gigalith while it was legal in NU for a while, although it didn't last and I didn't have it made fast enough before it got moved back to UU. Gigalith has the same ability as Tyranitar in Sandstream, which incorporates weather into the Trick Room team, which I love. I love combining weather and Trick Room. It makes things unbelievably complicated and unbelievably fun. Gigalith might be one of the best base added Pokemon suited to Trick Room. 85 HP, 130 defense, 80 special defense, making it an extremely bulky Pokemon on top of the 135 base attack. Very shocking for this Pokemon. I honestly thought it could have something like 100 base stat attack and it'd be totally fine. But alongside the beautiful 25 speed being one of the slowest Pokemon in the game, Possibly the slowest Pokemon in the tier, at least not counting lower tier Pokemon like Enu or, or Untiered, but 25 base stat speed, you're going to be outspeeding pretty much every single Pokemon in UU with Trick Room up, while also maintaining that incredible bulk and incredible base attack stat. Diddleth can also set up Stealth Rocks on its own, which I mentioned earlier is a huge part of Trick Room and very, very important for knocking your opponent's Pokemon into those damage ranges to one-hit KO them. Gigalith's moveset is going to be pretty standard. You're probably going to want to go Stealth Rock, Stone Edge, maybe Explosion for some fun though. Having some Trick Room Explosion would be pretty damn hilarious. And then Earthquake and Rock Blast, maybe Protect if you're playing doubles are some other great options. Okay, finally what we're all here for, at least what I'm here for, moving on to NU, the tier that I have the most experience with ever since starting playing competitive in 2014. I started playing Pokemon in 2013, but started playing competitive in 2014 and really stuck to NU. Let's go ahead and cover NU Trick Room Abusers. NU has so many Trick Room Abusers because of the low stats of the tier. I'm going to go ahead and run through a bunch really quickly, but then go back and cover some extensively. So let's go ahead and get started. Gollum, Slowbro, Quagsire, Pylo Swine, Escavalier, and Electros. Those are some of the incredible users from the NU specific Pokedex, but now I'm going to go ahead and run through some of my personal collection and show you guys even the untiered Pokemon can be really incredible in NU. Okay, these are some of my personal favorite Trick Room users in my personal collection. Let's go through them Bibarel, Girder, Ursaring, Sudowoodo, underrated, at least within Trick Room. Outside, it's pretty trash. Golurk, Musharna. Musharna is also a great Trick Room setter of its own, and I would love to make one for that purpose soon. Uh, Machamp, Buffalant, Rampardos, Flareon. Flareon's pretty underrated, extremely diverse move pool. Bear Tech, and then my personal favorite, Shuckle. Okay, let's go ahead and cover one of, in my opinion, one of the most underrated Trick Room users in NU. 
Golurk is a Pokemon with a very incredible ability with Iron Fist, not Klutz. Klutz is useless. But Iron Fist is a great ability, and it really goes into his theme and really goes into his move pool. Iron Fist increases the power of punching moves. So as you can see on mine, I have three punching moves, providing great coverage, and I have two stab moves. Shadow Punch, Drain Punch, Fire Punch. Three punch moves, all getting boosted power, all having great coverage, Drain Punch healing him, Shadow Punch having stab and lands without fail in terms of accuracy, all of which being such great assets for such a great and underrated Pokemon like Golark. Having brave nature, subtracting from his speed, adding to his attack only makes him even better. I do wish his speed IV was zero or lower, but that's okay. Nice bulk, good attack IVs, etc, etc. Let's move into his base stats. So Golark has some weird numbered base stats like some of the other Pokemon we've seen with 89 HP and 124 attack. 80 defense, 80 special defense. So look at that. Look at that extreme, another extreme bulky physical attacker. That's really the trick room kind of staple and the trick room kind of, you know, what it's what it's all about is having these bulky physical attackers that have low speed, like 55 speed, but then being able to overcome that weakness within trick room. Golurk is a great Pokemon for immediate impact and coming in and really chipping through your enemy team. One of the things I don't recommend on Golurk, I don't even know if he, it's possible, I don't know if he has any of these moves, but I don't recommend using him as a setup Pokemon. I really think he shines when he comes in, makes immediate impact within Trick Room, and then operates decently without a Trick Room just due to his bulk. His typing is also super unique in Ground Ghost, making him bulkier and, and unpredictable in ways that your opponent wouldn't expect. Okay, let's go ahead and move into one of the more premier Pokemon in the, in the tier. Even outside of Trick Room, this Pokemon is an extremely good Pokemon. I think it has real potential to shine in Trick Room, and I haven't seen enough players using it like this. So Piloswine has been a surprising NU threat, in my opinion. It's It was good a long time ago, but in, I really think it should have been outclassed and outshined. But it having things like Ice Shard as a priority Sab Ice move really keep it in the meta and keep it strong. Also, Ground Ice being a pretty interesting typing, even though it doesn't have a great ability. Oblivious is okay, but not the best, at least in my opinion, personally. It being Ice Ground also gives it incredible stab coverage moves, and things like Ice Shard, which you already covered, being the stab move that has priority, and things like Icicle Crash, which is an egg move, which is a much higher powered ice move, which you can use within Trick Room to much greater effect. Having Rock Slide, having Stab Earthquake is always a must. It's really a great Pokemon. It's one of the best Pokemon at taking down Flying-type Pokemon in NU. And there are a decent amount, a surprising amount, of very powerful Flying-type Pokemon like Swellow, which I've covered in a PvP video. Moving on to Piloswine's base stat, having a super nice bulk of 100 HP, 80 defense, although pretty mediocre 60 special defense. A nice, strong 100 base attack stat is pretty beautiful. Especially to have this bolt and power on one Pokemon within the NU tier is pretty surprising. Having 50 speed meant to be its downside, being able to be exploited and abused within the Trick Room setting is pretty beautiful. I have already covered Ursaring a little and Machamp a little, but they are great bulky physical attackers within the Trick Room as well. I can go ahead and cover another one that's very similar to them in Bear Tick. So Bear Tick is similar to Machamp in a ton of ways in terms of stats. But in typing, it's very different in being ice-type fighting as opposed to fighting-type Machamp. This bear tick, just like the Ursaring, is going to try to operate inside and outside of Trick Room. As you can see, it's Jolly, and then Eevee trained at 252 speed, 252 attack, just like the Ursaring. Ursaring's base stats are extremely similar to Machamp's, having a 95 HP, 130 attack, 80 defense, 80 special defense, and then 50 speed. I believe Machamp might have 55 speed, so slightly fast. But it's basically nice to have what is a Machamp clone, but in Ice type. Also, he has two priority moves, which are super important. I know that Machamp has the one priority move in Bullet Punch, which is very important to Trick Room and very important to his damage being a slower Pokemon. Bear Tick having access to Aqua Jet, which is similar again to Machamp in it being a non stab priority move that is just really nice to have on a slower Pokemon with so much strength behind it. When you have a Pokemon like Bear Tick or Machamp, them having a priority move at all is honestly so nice. Having that priority move on top of the bulk and physical attack is just 
so important through their damage and through their gameplay and surviving and being able to do things they shouldn't be able to normally do. Okay, that should go ahead and cover basically every Trick Room setter and every Trick Room abuser that I wanted to cover in most tiers. Thank you so much for watching all of that. I really appreciate it if you did. And hopefully it was helpful and I could unload some information on you guys to help you in your Pokemon competitive journey. Okay, wow. What an insane video. First of all, thank you so much for your time. If you made it this far, you're incredible. And I really appreciate it. Um, make sure to like or dislike this video. Subscribe if you want. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, whatever you feel necessary, whatever you feel comfortable, whatever you want to do, you know. If you want to leave comments saying this was annoying and a cringe and a waste of time, go ahead. If you want to leave comments saying this was extremely helpful and you learned a lot, go ahead. Whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you feel from this video, I want you to truly express to me and I really appreciate it. I've currently been recording for this video for around three hours. This has been one of the most ambitious video projects that I've put together in a very long time and I'm very happy to put forth this effort to the Pokemon Mo community. I think this is an incredible game with an incredible community with some very talented players that go under the radar. So I just wanted to express whatever knowledge I have, even though it's not as much as some. I have been playing the game since 2013, but it honestly shocks me how much how, how good players are, you know, and how much they've improved over how many years this game existed. So it, it's incredible. Thank you so much all for watching, and I hope you have a great day. I hope you catch the best Pokemon. I hope you win all of your PvP games. Peace and love. Thank you so much. Signing out, Petrowski.